All right, I now recognize the ranking member for five minutes. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'm very pleased that we've started having oversight hearings on the implementation of the Affordable Care Act. I think it's an important role for the committee to play. And I also think as we go forward, it would be really constructive for us to begin having hearings on not just overall, should we have the ACA or not, but rather um, to drill down into some of the particular issues, like we did a couple of weeks ago when we did have small businesses come in here to this committee to talk to us about some of the challenges that they were facing. Um, I wish, though, that we were pursuing some of this oversight in a less hyperbolic fashion, as, as we just heard. Um, frankly, when the administration announced a couple of weeks ago that they were delaying the employer mandate, it took many of us on this side of the aisle by surprise as, as well as on your side of the aisle. But, but frankly, thinking about that panel of small business people that we had here, one might argue that the administration was just listening to some businesses about some very real issues that they had. Uh, not that I would expect anybody on your side of the aisle to, to give the administration any credit for that. I do think, though, that we should put all of this into context because um, while this one particular part of the law has been delayed for a year, there's a lot more that's going to be going on in implementation and a lot that will help the American public. I'd like to talk about a little bit about that. First of all, the delay of the employer mandate does not impact the 95% of large employers that are already offering insurance to their employees. Let me say that again. 95% of large employers are already offering coverage to that, their employees, and that will continue to happen. Also, the delay of the employer mandate does not impact the millions of low-income uninsured Americans who will be newly eligible for the Medicaid program, at least in the states where the governors have not turned the, down the opportunity to provide fully funded coverage to their citizens. And the delay won't impact the state or federal exchanges, the heart of the health care law. Beginning in October, millions of Americans will be able to go to the exchanges, shop for the best insurance coverage for themselves and their family in a transparent competitive market and be protected from the worst abuses of the insurance industry. They won't have to worry about rescissions or denial of coverage if they become ill or injured or if they have a pre-existing condition. And, and this is really key when you talk about should we delay this for a year for individuals, those people People who want insurance, who can now go to the exchanges and get that ex insurance, will be eligible for billions of dollars in premium subsidies and tax credits to help make that health insurance affordable. So I would say, why would we delay that for people who really want to get affordable insurance, not just in New York, but in Pennsylvania and Colorado and all around this country? The benefits of the law will be real and significant. The reports released by the Democratic staff show yesterday that in Colorado, for example, over, or I'm sorry, in my district, in the first district of Colorado, over 120,000 people who don't have health insurance now will have access to quality affordable coverages without fear of discrimination or higher rates. And if it wasn't so important, I would have almost had to laugh yesterday when the response to the administration's um, announcement was to vote yet again to repeal the Affordable Care Act. The main talking point seemed to be relief, but in fact, the public needs to get insurance and it needs to get it affordable. I don't think that relief means taking health care coverage away from millions of Americans. I don't think that it means eliminating billions of dollars in tax credits and subsidies. I don't think that it means leaving millions of American children and adults with pre-existing conditions at the tender mercies of the insurance companies. And I don't think that it means eliminating or delaying provisions of the law that are helping to keep costs under control. Now, you can poo-poo this article about the rates, the premium rates in New York State, and maybe you could if that was the only state in which the premiums were going down. But in fact, We've seen across the country that is, as these preliminary rates come, uh, come in, they are lower. And in fact, in some cases, the insurance companies are actually asking to rebid in the exchanges. And so I think we need to continue to try to tune this up. I read an article day, today when the, the Republican majority passed the Part D Medicare um, provisions in, in about 10 years ago. There was a lot of confusion. All of us work together to make those work, 
It was rocky at first, but it worked. And now over 90% of seniors love those protections. That's what we should be striving for in a bipartisan way today. And I want to thank you for having the hearing, but I think we need to move on from this. And I yield back. Thanks.